Welcome back. It's uh, January 8th and the second of demos. Thank you, Keeb, for pinch hitting in demo hosting. Um, stoked to be back with everybody. Let's uh, let's have some demos with Paul. Paul, take it away. So uh, at this before Christmas, Adam and I had a conversation about like what attribute functions would be able to be used for, and the fact that um, there are some assets that people use to be able to use their their name within it. And um, so one of the one of the areas of of uses here is that um, I am rules. You need what's called an assume rule policy. And assume rule policies are basically a lump of JSON. Okay. Nobody ever remembers how to create that lump of JSON, but yet everyone uses assume rule policies. So what we're actually able to do now is use an attribute function to be able to do that. So there is no assume rule policy right here. But if I create an assume rule policy for lambda.amazon aws.com, then the attribute func is actually going to run and it's going to run in line and it's actually going to generate the policy for us. So these types of delighters are just for modeling are just going to be spectacular for users because they just need to give us a service name and it will actually do everything that it needs to and they don't actually need to do anything internal. So, you know, the power of the attribute functions are continuing to be surfaced here, which is exactly the, the types of scenarios that we can cover. Yeah, that's sick. That's tiny but fun. Um... Uh, okay, let's go to Wendy. All right, so I've got a bunch of UI improvements and bug fixes to demo. Um, the first of those improvements is uh, all components now have an ellipsis menu that allows you to access the same right-click menu as on the diagram, as well as edges, and if you select multiple components as well. Um, Next up, uh, the change set abandonment now has an approval flow, just like applying a change set. So if I click to do this, it's going to say, hey, there's another person active on the same change set. So you need to do this approval flow. And I can vote approve over here on a different monitor. And boom, it'll go through just the same. Um, what else? I uh, fixed a bunch of hover states across the UI, including making sure that everything on this top bar has a tooltip. Um, da, 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 da. There are hover tooltips for truncated text in the attribute uh, viewer now. So if I give this a super long name and it gets truncated, oh, I had to make a change set to do that. Now, if I mouse over it, we have a little tooltip that shows the thing so you can actually see. Um, there was a bug with the trackpad tap on uh, the secret popover that has been fixed. Thank you, Theo, for tag teaming that one and we actually found a couple other like mouse related bugs in the process um let's see um and then finally i started work on but did not finish working on improving the apply history this area like needs a lot of work ui wise but at least the data is a little bit more uh compounded or dense i suppose that's what i'm looking for uh, but we'll continue that work today cool Beautiful. Um, let's do Theo. Okay, there we go. A um, couple small things. One, uh, when we copy paste now, uh, the loader shows until the things appear. Uh, before there was a delay between the loader disappearing and the new things showing up, which similar it was similar to how insert was working before. And it just felt broken. So that's good. Um, another one is when I, we had some issues around, um, event handling on keyboard. And so for example, before, if I had this popover open, I hit escape, it would, it was clearing the popover, but it was actually doing it by clearing the selection. And so the whole right panel was going away. And so what I added was sort of a, a new sort of global helper handler thing that lets you assign priority to to handlers on the window right. so that this has a higher priority and gets called first. So when I hit escape now, the popover goes away. If I hit escape again, it clears the selection. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're doing things. That mostly comes up with like global key handlers for things like escape. Um, and last, uh, when you hold option and click and drag, it forces us into drag to select mode and it will ignore the thing that you initially clicked on. 
And why yeah. that's handy is that when we're inside of frames, like nested frames, now we can actually drag to select what we want, uh, as opposed to before it was, you know, just always mm -hmm. moving. The thing. It was like impossible to do before. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, graphics programs tend to solve this with like a lock unlock. So you'd like right click and then lock that one and then kind of drag what you want inside. Yeah. Um, we'd also talked about, you know, using the header as sort of like the only draggable area, but like it was just going to be too inconsistent with other behavior. Like what happens if you click, what happens if you drag? So test it out with the option key or alt or, or whatever, the middle, the one next to command, whatever, depending on your uh, keyboard. Um, and uh, let us know how it feels. I think it feels pretty good. Lovely. Um, let's do keep. It's cool to see that um, diagrams are getting more complicated with copy and paste now. And uh, yeah, anyway, as an assign. Um, so one thing I wanted to quickly highlight before I actually jumped into the, to the demo is the create workspace is really amazing for having multiple workspaces for a given environment that you have. So like, you know, I have my normal kind of dev test workflow workspace, but then I also created this one called Home Lab to model my Home Lab. And you can see it like points to the same URL. So you just point to the same URL, give it a different name and you have a brand new workspace to, to be messing with. Anyway, um, what I did over uh, the last week and this weekend was I modeled um, the part of my home lab infrastructure in SI. Uh, it's about 60 assets or so, um, and you can zoom in. Uh, yeah, it, it it gets a little it's a little cluttered, but we're gonna we're gonna look at that. Um, so yeah, you know, here we have a, a virtual machine that sits inside, uh, sorry, that has inside of it a Docker Compose executor, which, you know, is basically importing a big Docker Compose um, file and modeling it as assets inside of system initiative. And one of the things um, that I found particularly compelling is some of these things have no uh, actual asset uh, no, no, actually, code um, behind them yet. But for modeling purposes, I just created an empty asset by going to customize, going to new asset, giving asset details. And what that allowed me to do was logically represent a thing that it doesn't have any code behind it yet as a method of communication and modeling. And then I can incrementally add code um, or backing support uh, over over time. So yeah, uh, that is that is my home lab. Sweet. Yeah, um, you love being. Well, I just I just really like seeing more complex things mm -hmm. start to get modeled because it starts mm -hmm. to point the it starts to reveal the truth of how powerful the underlying system really can be. I'm like seeing all sorts of hidden features here, like print previews, like you know, like presentation mode, like everything. Where yeah, there's like a lot of coolness that can be like expanded based on these diagrams. Totally. All right, Victor, you're up. Oh no. Uh, okay. So I need an extra minute for stuff to start to to migrate. So I guess I can. Does anybody have a joke? No jokes. Yeah. I had We're like a funny group, whole, but I had uh, pneumonia. John, like, John, you definitely have jokes. You are not. All, you have jokes. <laughs> Horse walks into a bar, and the bartender says, "Why the long face?" It's a bit of a classic. <laughs> Uh, a Everything. dyslexic walks into a bra. <laughs> uh, a Good bear master. walks into a bar and says, can I have a gin and tonic? And the bartender's like, yeah, sure, but why the big pause? And he's like, they're the only ones I got. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great delivery all around. Yeah, that was that was that was bad. That was, that was yeah. bad. Are we leaving this in? Oh, yeah. Of course we are. Of course. <laughs> I'm kind of tempted to just playing like a minute of trumpet for you, but I won't. Well, it probably won't help the system boot faster. <laughs> I was just yeah, I had handy. a good joke a few weeks ago, and it's the, uh, what was it that his daughter wanted him to tell? I told up so many people that joke. Uh, the, uh, oh, what, what do you call, 
what's the breed of dog that uh does magic abracadabrador or something like that or something to that effect john <laughs> you can't be reusing jokes man I, don't know, I, mean, I give you I give you credit every time, John Watson. Um, what do you call a magician's dog? A labracadabrador. Uh, there you go. Uh, there you go. Oh, I was gonna say definitely good. labracadabrador. Yeah. I'll um I'll yeah. prepare more. Hey Adam, What's red and yes. bad for your teeth. Yeah. I'll 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 do another another quick one if that's cool. okay. Yeah. What is, what please. is it though, Wendy? Tell us. That. What's red and bad yeah, for please. your teeth? <laughs> what's what's so say it again? What's red and bad for your what's teeth? What's red and bad for your teeth? I don't know what. A brick. Oh Jesus! Oh. <laughs> I, I swear you're going to say a red baseball the old bat. anarchist jokes. <laughs> keep keep doing another short one. Yeah, I'm going to do another yeah. short one. Hit it. Okay. So uh, last week, um, I also did a live thread in Discord, yeah. which was a ton of fun uh, on authoring both sides of an asset. And so you can see here in Discord, I basically went through creating uh, a Python web API for creating a QMU image and returning that as a resource inside of system initiative. And so feedback appreciated. What was really fun about it was creating all of this basically on the fly and recording little snippet videos and video editing them and talking to people in Discord while that was happening. And so, yeah, um, thanks for the feedback to those who have provided it so far. Uh, but hopefully people will see this and come in and, and uh, take a look. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, hit it. Yeah, so our plan for the week, are you seeing the right screen? The one, mm -hmm. the system initiative one? Cool. Yes. Uh, was to like update our validation system to have something like easier to work with and, and yeah, faster to implement to uh, on the authoring side. And what we ended up doing is bringing in joy definition objects into our system. So right now for any prop, you can call, and let's, let's do this for Docker image, because I thought it was a good, I needed to validate that this worked, worked for like array items. So this mm -hmm. turned up to be a good, uh, good like test scenario. And also a good example, if I go here to the ports prop and I add a validation, let's do let's code for it again, add validation. Sorry, that's not it. Uh, set validation. Set validation format. Thanks, Paul. Set validation format. There's no like fuzzy autocomplete here. So if I if I miss like the first line, that's it. The first yeah, character yeah. is not that's giving me really. anything. But yeah, let's say we know that the ports for like the Docker image needs to be a, a number, then a forward slash, and then TCP or UDP, depending on the type of port. You set a validation format here. It starts as a joy object. Uh, it's a string. It should be required. And it also matches a pattern. And luckily the pattern is already here on my rejects 101 thing. But it's like, yeah, any, any regular expression, right? Put it in here, wait for a bit. And I'm setting this as a detail on the like the entry for the ports prop, right? The prop, not the props entry. Hmm. And then we wait for a bit. See the Docker image. Nice. You'll see that there's this extra qualification here, which is the schema validation one. Uh, and it like it'll list out every prop uh, below domain that exists and that it can validate. So if I add a couple of array items, this will start failing already, hopefully, as required. And it's like, it's running on the front end, but it's extremely fast. Uh, yeah, so expose port zero, expose port one, both are required. If I set a value that makes sense here, and then like anything over here, the qualification message itself, it'll show you exactly which validation failed to. So it knows that the first one failed because it didn't match the required pattern. And that works for like kind or for anything. Set a copy right here, B. Yeah. For those who don't know, that was Easy so handy to validate mm -hmm. values inside arrays and objects before. It is, yeah. 
And also like it was like it was extremely fast to author too because like just the time you took to like find a, a validation function back to into a component that you already altered is like two times lower than just writing that line. Yeah, love it. Love it. All right. Any last minute demos? Go once, go on twice. Sold. All right. See you later, future people. See you next week.